Welcome back to Next Gaming, where we cover everything newsworthy that pertains to games. If you want to support the channel, hit the subscribe button. We create gaming and movie industry content daily. Starting off with the tiny tidbits, Star Wars Jedi Survivor has leaked online with his pre-order bonuses. The game is set for March 15, 2023. So, I mean, if you want to pre-order it, you can get these cosmetics. It's mostly just cosmetics, so I'm not really digging it, but... The first one was pretty solid, so I have high expectations for this one as well, so I would say it's pretty safe to, to pre-order this, this title. Xbox Game Pass has given Battlefield 2042 a second chance. Does it deserve it though? A lot of people are asking this question. I don't think it does, but hopefully it can revive the, the franchise, at least this game, this title. Hopefully it can, they can start turning it around a little bit, but we're just going to have to wait and find out if they make some more patches in the upcoming seasons. PlayStation Plus' monthly games for December has been revealed with Mass Effect The Legendary Edition, which is the, the entire trilogy going to PlayStation 4, Biomutant hitting PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, and then DKO Divine Knockout, not really too sure on what that is. Decent lineup, gotta say, I'm probably gonna download Biomutant on my PlayStation 5. I do have the PS4 version that I never got to, so it's all available on December 6th. As for Xbox Game Pass for December, we have Hello Neighbor 2, High on Life, Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, The Walking Dead The Final Season, and Metal Hellsinger coming to Xbox One. Hello Neighbor 2 and The Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is coming December 6th, Metal Hellsinger is coming December 8th, and High on Life is coming December 13th. So apparently Sony assigned over 150 employees to aid the Callisto Protocol's production launch. I think this makes perfect sense as to why the PlayStation 5 is the only platform that seemed to be playable with the Callisto Protocol. I didn't really have too many issues whatsoever playing it, but seeing the PC and the Xbox community, they really didn't have a good experience, I would say. A lot of stuttering, a lot of frame rate issues, and just a messy time overall. When you look at the Callisto Protocol's reviews, they're just all over the place. You have a 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10, and then it ranges to 7 out of 10s to 9 out of 10 being the highest score I've seen. Honestly, it's, it's really up to the divisive combat system they have implemented in this game some people are gonna love it some are just gonna hate it i was kind of like in the middle you know it was very frustrating at times but at other times it seemed very easy you know so like the beginning of the game it's very easy to to hate the game right but then as you go along further and you get more weapons and abilities the game does kind of seem a little bit more fun but then as you get closer to the end with some of the cringy uh boss battles it can be a little tedious and I, I would say push people away so I don't know if these high scores people just didn't play through the entire game I don't know if that's the case or or what but yeah they're 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 all over the place as for need for speed unbound those reviews are all over the place as well with five out of tens to nine out of tens seven point five eight six it's just everywhere so I don't really understand the the concept of a, a bad need for speed I, I feel like it's pretty consistent with what need for speed is if anything this just this applied a new uh art format i would i would imagine other than that the gameplay looks solid it looks it doesn't look like the the comic booky um miles morales type of look is expanded into the actual gameplay it's mostly just cutscenes or the characters themselves so i don't i don't really see the negativity on that as for marvel's midnight suns we also got those reviews and it's a little, uh, they're, they're high reviews. Everybody's rating it very high, but what I've seen from, you know, streamers and content creators on YouTube, the game is, is a much more mixed bag. You know, it's, it's more likely a 7.5 to 8 out of 10 type of title versus what they actually rated it, which is 9 out of 10s, 8, 8.8s, 8 and, uh, you know, 8.5s. So mostly like an 8 to 9 out of 10 game. But I, I don't know. I, I see it as... A mixed bag I'm, I'm only about four to five hours in so far I'm having a good time but the worst parts is back at the the hero hub where you have to go through tedious uh, conversations and little tasks that kind of take you out of the immersion I would say but the gameplay overall is it could be tedious you know and repetitive but it's it's uh it's a good time overall so far there's been a, a good variety of characters and I'm kind of still figuring out which ones I'm uh, I'm gonna stick with and upgrade but Overall, it's it's probably the best game so far <laughs> out of this month, uh, so that's kind of depressing, but that's what it is. As for trailers, we got the first 18 minutes of Dead Space. I really wanted to uh, not watch too much of this to avoid spoilers for myself, but if you guys want to check it out, it is in the description, so you can check that 18 minutes of Dead Space. 
We also got Lost Souls Asides announcement trailer. It, it definitely looks like it blends Final Fantasy with, you know, maybe like a control type of game. It does look interesting. It looks fun. I'm just glad we got something new, a new IP. It's just, it's really interesting that we're, we're seeing something new with this format. So can't wait to see more of this game. It looks incredible. It looks really fun. So tell me in the comments below what you guys think of it. We also got the showcase teaser for Dead Island 2. I don't know if they're going to, you know, showcase game mechanics throughout this, but it did seem live action, so I don't know where they're going with this, but, you know, should be interesting. It's coming out tomorrow, so check that out. We also got Dark Tide's launch trailer. Um, honestly, it, I'm downloading it right now on PC Game Pass, so I'll let you guys know what I think about it in a couple days, but, I mean, overall, looks good. I've gotten good first impressions from other YouTubers, so I uh, can't wait to play it. Uh, check it out if you have Game Pass or PC. All right, on to the juicy bits of the show with Microsoft raising their price of the games for 2023 from $64 to $74. This isn't really shocking or a surprise considering that Phil Spencer has talked repeatedly over the last couple months about raising the prices on certain things, quote unquote. So I really expected him to bump the Game Pass Ultimate subscription cost but you know i could see that later down in the road maybe 2023 or 2024 it'd be a, a slight increase in price for that as well but from 64 to 74 it seems like an industry standard at this point with rockstar uh take two uh sony all being involved in this i, b I believe ea as well is uh bumped up to 74 ubisoft actually they 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 are in that group as well <laughs> so it, this is probably just a standard going forward so you should expect to pay $74 on launch for most titles going forward. Alright guys, that's it for the show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to join the Wolf Pack. Peace. Bye.